Hi everybody, I hope you all are doing great. Today we're going to talk about the card scraper again. Now the last time we talked about the card scraper, we learned how to sharpen the edges, we learned how to hold it properly, and we also demonstrated how to remove tear out from the face of a board. That tends to be the most typical application of the card scraper, but there are many, many other ways that we use the card scraper in our shop every day. So I promised I would go over some of those ways. Let's take a closer look. Okay, here we have a piece of American black cherry, which I have hand planed clean, but it has a couple of spots in it where the grain has torn out. Here, here, a little bit right there. It's actually a pretty well behaved board, so there's not a lot of tear out here. In the last episode, we learned how to remove this tear out with a card scraper. We learned not to work in one small spot, but to generalize our efforts over the width of the board so that we didn't make a shallow bowl. We also learned that little flip technique that I just did that helps keep our thumbs and the scraper blade from overheating. All right, the tear out's already gone, so I better just quit. Now, today we're going to learn about some other ways to use the card scraper, and the first of those is actually using it on the edge of a board in much the same way we use it on the face, but this time we're going to hold it a little bit differently so that we can get a better view of what we're doing and balance on this narrow edge. Let's take a look. Okay, now we've got the piece secure in our vise. I've already hand planed this edge smooth, but there are a couple places that I just want to touch up with the scraper. Now, you can do it in the normal way where you put your thumbs behind the scraper flex the scraper slightly and push away from you, but you'll find that when you do this, you can't actually see where you're cutting. And that means it's very difficult to see whether you have the scraper in plane with this surface. And what tends to happen is you'll dig into one edge and scrapers put so much pressure on the workpiece that it'll really destroy any edges like this. So. Instead of doing that, we're actually going to pull the scraper towards us. Put all four of our fingers along the edge, almost as if we were sharpening it again. Lift it up to the angle at which it cuts, and then we're going to start at one end and just pull. Now I can see exactly what I'm doing and watch a little shaving curl right off of the inside of my scraper. Now using this method, you can see exactly what you're doing. And uh, we routinely work on edges as small as an eighth of an inch using this technique. You might want to start with something a little thicker. This is about one inch, three quarter inch material is not particularly hard to do either. But it's a great way to remove a little bit of tear out on the edge instead of getting out the sandpaper. When you make a cut like this, before you start the cut, make sure that your scraper is sitting nicely on the edge. You can see light coming through if it's not sitting properly on the edge. Make sure that light's not coming through and then make your cut. There you go. Another way to use the card scraper that often surprises people is on ingrain. A lot of times you'll have saw marks or other defects that you want to remove quickly. Sandpaper works just fine, but as usual, a scraper is faster. Now before you hand plane or scrape end grain, make sure that you've beveled your edges wherever your blade is going to escape the cut. If you don't, it will actually break the fibers of the wood and you'll end up with some pretty nasty damage on the outside of your workpiece. So take a few seconds to just put a slight bevel on the edges where you think you might exit the cut and you're ready to go. Now we have one small saw mark right here and we have a little bit of chatter from the hand plane 
in this end grain, and we're going to remove that with the scraper. I've beveled the edge that's now facing towards me so that when I pull through this cut, I don't break out any of these fibers. We're going to do this in exactly the same way we work on the edge of a board. We're going to use the pull cut technique. We're going to make sure we're balanced on the edge and then make the cut. And you'll see, if I can pick one up here, what you get is a shaving, but it's so delicate that it just falls apart when you try and pick it up. I'm done. What you end up with is a cut that is similar in feel to what you would get after you hand plane end grain. And what we've done is we've cut these end grain fibers, which are like straws, but in doing so, we've compressed the straws and laid them over in the direction that we're cutting, and after the cut is through, the straw stands back up like that, and you get sort of a rough feel. And this is ready for about 320 grit sandpaper, so it's not very rough at all, but you can feel a little bit of texture there. This is one of the classic uses for the card scraper, removing glue squeeze out from the seam in a glued up panel. Now I've got two panels here. This one I glued up about two hours ago. This one I glued up yesterday. So the glue on this one has gotten very hard. And you can see what happens when you try and scrape this glue off. It's actually going to tear the fibers out as the glue is removed. It'll still do the trick, but it's very likely that in doing it, you'll have some damage along the glue line because the glue has cured for too long. So as a general rule, you want to leave your glue ups in the clamps for two hours, three hours at the most, and then you want to scrape the glue off. Now when the glue is still just a little bit rubbery like it is in this panel, it'll come off in almost one sweep. Yep, there you go. All cleaned up, you can remove a little bit more. Don't spend a whole bunch of time with this tool on a glue seam or you'll make a trough. All you need to do is that one initial sweep, flip it over, and do it again. That's it, it's that fast. It's a great way to get glue off of a glue line. Another way to use the card scraper that seems to have been largely forgotten is actually cutting back finishes. Now this has been stained and then sprayed with a clear waterborne polyurethane. And inevitably, when you spray, especially if you're using waterborne, it's going to raise the grain some. And it's also very likely that you'll get dust nibs and other things landing in your finish. And that can make the finish feel quite rough. So between coats, we cut back. One way to cut back is with abrasives, but a much faster way to cut back is with the card scraper. So when we cut back with a card scraper, we're not going to use the thumbs behind technique as that puts too much pressure and force on the cutting edge. This is a delicate process, so we're going to use the four fingers technique and we're going to pull towards us. And we're just going to set the scraper lightly on the surface and pull. Now I hold it at a much steeper angle than I would usually hold the scraper when I'm cutting back a finish. But we're not trying to remove much material. We're just dragging across and you can actually hear it hopping across the nibs and the raised grain and cutting them flat. And after a few passes, that's it. You'll have your surface all cleaned up. Now usually we'll take an abrasive pad like this maroon pad and actually work it back and forth just like you would a piece of sandpaper until you get an even dull sheen and now it's ready for the next coat. The great thing about cutting back a finish first with a scraper instead of going straight to the abrasive pad is that the scraper will actually flatten the finish back out. Instead of rounding over dust nibs and other imperfections like an abrasive pad might do, the scraper actually cuts straight through them and flattens out your finish. Then you follow up with the abrasive pad and you're ready for your final coat. Just be sure that when you use the scraper to cut back your finish, you use gentle pressure or else you risk cutting right through your finish 
and maybe even your stain. Those are just a few of the ways that we use scrapers in our shop most often, but there are many other ways to use the card scrapers. One of our favorites is to remove glue squeeze out from the inside corner of assembled pieces. Sometimes you'll get glue on the inside corner or on the inside edge of assembled work pieces and it's very difficult to get in there with any other tool and get the glue out without damaging the workpiece. But a scraper does it really quickly and very efficiently. And for that reason, we tend to leave our scraper corners very sharp. Some people like to round their corners over, which alleviates the possibility of digging into your workpiece when you're using the scraper. But if you do that, then you won't be able to use this to remove glue from inside corners. So for that reason, we tend to leave them square and sharp. Another great use for the scraper is actually cleaning up curved work. It works on inside curves as well as it works on outside curves. So if you've got some curved work pieces that you've cut out on the bandsaw and you want to remove the bandsaw marks, the scraper is a great tool for that. Or if you've cleaned it up with a spoke shave, and you've got some tear out, again, the scraper is great for removing tear out. And the technique is exactly the same as working on the edge of a board, which we demonstrated earlier. Scrapers are also really good for finishing up saw cuts on half-blind dovetails. They make great shims, and actually, they're a really nice spacer. If you've got a nail that didn't go exactly as planned and you need to remove it, just use this as a spacer underneath your pry bar and between the workpiece to prevent the pry bar from damaging your workpiece. It's really thin, which lets you get the pry bar exactly where you want it, and because it's metal, you can't hurt it. There are many other ways to use the card scraper that I've demonstrated in this video. If you all think of some that are of particular interest to you, hopefully I'll get around to demonstrating some of those. Just leave them in the comments section on this video. I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe if you do, and check out DanielChapin.com.